Come on in. Hey, hey. Do you want a water? Can I get you a water? Yeah, water would be good. Thanks. All right, let me just grab it. All we have here is soda. And then my water, which you don't want because that's what I've been drinking from. All right, so this just starting up here. Ooh, this one has electrolytes. Oh, nice. I don't know what that means, but it sounds good, right? All right, hey, Albert, what's going on? Okay, so let's do, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit here. All right, we're gonna jump in. So, um, Terry, how you doing? Um, so today what we're going to just talk about is just jumping into a little bit more about social media, the specifics of different platforms. Okay. So um, before I jump into any of that, I got some questions ahead of time. Uh, one of the questions that somebody had was, what are some of the automatic tools that you can use to be able to make posting up on social media a little bit easier? Things like Buffer and Hootsuite was one, two of the things that, that were uh, asked about. So I'll definitely talk about those. Um, but before diving in, um, is there anything that you guys wanted to know? Are there any particular platforms that are on your mind that you're like, how do I basically, not necessarily how do you use it, but is there any particular topic or is there any that's on your mind before we jump in? So I will put it out there to the audience. Any, any questions? Gotcha. You have anything, John? I had, I had fun playing around with what we learned last week. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Did you end up uh, making anything? I did. That's good. Yeah. I've erased everything, but I was able to put together a trailer and a movie. Oh, good. <laughs> good. So John was just mentioning, uh, for those of you that couldn't hear him, he um, from, from last week he had basically a tutorial on how to leverage iMovie or, or an app like Vu or, or PowerDirector and basically create your own trailer um, or your own little you know edited video, which is cool. What about you? Uh, don't really have... Don't really have questions. Okay. Um, okay. Perfect. No questions means no answers. It's pretty simple. Um, <laughs> so we'll. Um, so it just as a as a um, kind of announcement for next week on March 9th, we'll be talking about if 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 you're in photography or you're like a videographer, how would you leverage social media in that context? The 16th, we're going to be talking about if you're in the healthcare industry. So let's think chiropractor. Even if you're hospital or clinic, how would you be leveraging social media? And then finally, on the 23rd, we'll be leveraging social media to get a job. Those are the, the areas that we want to focus in on. Uh, next week, we're meeting at Happy Mac. So here locally, just um, we're going to meet down the road at uh, Brian's place. So it'll so look for it on Facebook. There'll be a, um, an event in the Sherman on Biz the page. So... So let's just jump right in then. Um, so what do you guys use right now platform-wise? I'm pretty exclusively on Facebook. S Facebook, okay. Yeah. Facebook and Instagram. Facebook and Instagram, okay. So you probably feel really f comfortable in those platforms of posting up um, different things. Mm -hmm. In that platform. In that platform, okay. Um, and and so, so it's nice. I mean, Facebook's the biggest platform. Um, monthly average users, active users monthly on Facebook. Uh, I think as of like November of 2017, it was at like 2 billion. Uh, so that's a lot of people. Population of the world is like 7.2 billion. So that's just a lot of people. But then on a daily basis, about 1.15 billion people go on to Facebook on a daily basis. So it's just, it's just that's where a lot of attention is. It's pretty exciting. Um, so one of the things that I, I find that's interesting in Facebook, um, I was talking to some high school students, about 150 of them recently, and even though it's considered kind of an older platform, but because everybody else is there, they all had accounts as well. This is freshmen all the way to seniors. So it's definitely looking like it'll still continue to be a viable um, source of you know people's attention because, let's be honest, if I'm still in business in 10 years, they'll be 28 so they'll be working they'll be you know having families and jobs and so if they're already used to the tool then then that then it just um, ha adds more value um <clears throat> so one of the platforms that um i think people often 
they don't know what to do with, um, people ask me questions, is Twitter. So number one, Twitter is one of those, it's probably one of the very few social media platforms that's actually real time. So you can send out a tweet, um, you have a, 280 characters. That was kind of, it started out at 140, they doubled it. So basically what that means is characters, thumbs up, thumbs down, spaces, letters, numbers, 280. It won't let you put in anything beyond that. Like it, 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 it like won't post it until you delete it to 280. Or if you have beyond that, that's all it's going to show is the 280. Anything that you have written is just going to get left off. Um, and also, hey, how you doing? Sierra. There's also, um, it allows you to do hashtags. It's really the platform that kind of first utilized hashtags in a really major way. And so that, what it does from the power of the hashtag is it allows your tweet or your post to be then searchable. So you can, on, on the platform, you can go to the search button mm -hmm. and then it'll pull up the most trending hashtags. Mm -hmm. So like almost always throughout the week, and you can, you can double check on this yourselves, Sarah, how you doing? Um, and chat. Chad, by the way, is like a voiceover guy. Pretty awesome. Like a James Earl Jones type. Really cool. Uh, he's in Minnesota, so we don't hold that against him just because he's in, you know, the devil's neighborhood. Anyway, so um, so what's interesting is your Monday, it's typically like this. Sunday morning, like hashtag Sunday morning typically is a trending one. Monday, typically hashtag Monday motivation or I've even seen Monday motiv um, Monday morning, uh, but mainly mo Monday motivation. Then Tuesday, it's like hashtag Tuesday thoughts or Tuesday motivation. Wednesday, it's Wednesday wisdom, or I've even seen like Wacky Wednesday, kind of depends on what's going on. Uh, hashtag, th you know, thir Thursday thoughts or throwback Thursday. And so what that means is just you're putting the hashtag, you're putting those words all right next to each other. There's no spaces. And then, so any time that somebody wants to see that hashtag, they can go into that hashtag and start searching everybody that's posting on that topic. What are you saying? Has a card? Um, it's a pound sign. Okay. Uh, that's what we call it. For those of you that are that are older, we call that a hashtag. Uh, a hashtag is a pound sign. <laughs> okay. um, and then the other thing that it helps you do is that if you're looking for something, right? So in our community, if you're like searching something for our particular city, like Wausau or nonprofits, you can put that hashtag and you can see what's scrolling, right? Photography, you know, uh, weddings or whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, the other thing that can be really useful um, on Twitter is that it can do video. It can do like a live stream. I'm not using it right now because Periscope, um, when I could choose between two mediums, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, those two seem to have a better notification process and getting people noticed that I'm going to go live. But you can even go live on like YouTube and on Twitter. Um, Periscope's just an app that you have to download in order for it to go live. Um, the other one that... Um, the other thing about Twitter is that it's probably one of the very few um, like platforms that when you do a when you you can follow a hashtag at the moment that it's occurring. So let's say you're watching a sporting event, there'll be like hashtag GVV um, Seattle, you know SEA, okay. and so anybody that's following that hashtag, so even the Packers organization they'll post out little clips of replays of different different plays um, in order to let people know about, hey, the touchdown just happened or the, made the field goal. You know, we're crushing Seattle Seahawks again. Um, yep, that's why I utilize hashtags to bring cultural awareness to the Native American population. That's a great idea. That's what um, someone said that that's what they do with the hashtags. Um, and so it can, it can be a way for not only you to be able to find people or particular content it's also a way for you to be able to make sure that your posts can be seen by anyone that's out there um the so that that's twitter it's really more of a speaking tool i find it to be used as well for like public service announcements you know how we get a lot of snow around here in our neck of the woods uh chance probably the same in minnesota so a lot of businesses they won't update their web website because you usually outsource to somebody at some other company. But what they'll do is they'll send a blast out on Twitter 
hey, we got six inches of snow, the banks are closed. So I remember like a couple of years ago when there was, the, um, there was, unfortunately, there was like a shooting in the area and then they, they locked down the schools. Um, then I know that that's what the superintendent used was, hey, schools are locked down, your kids are safe, but this is a protocol that we have if there's an active shooter in the area. Um, I know my bank also sent a, a blast out saying that the banks were closed just due to um, the, the situation that was happening. Uh, who that send that blast out? Um, so a lot of times, good question. So John asked who ends up sending those out. So a lot of times it's somebody that um, is in more of that public relations role. You don't really see them very often in businesses anymore. So a lot of times it's maybe the some kind of an office manager or someone that's maybe managing their social media would be the person that sends out that so blast. So it's an individual thing. It's not correct. a blanket uh, tweet or anything. Correct, yeah. So that's a really good point. So in, in such, something like that where you're making an announcement, it's not something that you're you're doing on a, on a regular basis. So it would, it would be something that's automated. It's a good point. Um, so because most people are familiar with Facebook and, and, and the platform that exists there, um, I'd say one of the unique things, though, about Facebook that I don't think people a lot of, they, they think about is... What happens is on Facebook is that whether you have like a long video or a long like almost, you know, three, four paragraphs long or picture, a lot of content is just consumed on Facebook. People aren't really caring too much, overly concerned about what's happening. They just want to be able to consume content. So it's a, it's a real good place if you have a business or um, an organization and you want to almost... I don't want to say dump your content, but it's a place to basically have all of your content being put there, whether it's video or text or, you know, um, or like like a blog. I, if I'm a blogger right now, I would use Medium and um, and Facebook. Medium's a nice tool. It's like um, I can basically put, post out articles, and then it'll automatically organize it like a blog. If someone were to go to my page. It automatically organizes all the articles I've written about. But the cool thing about it is it also utilizes the value of the the, the power of a hashtag. And that is so if I'm let's say I write about nonprofits, John, someone that's looking for nonprofits in this this medium website can can have access to my article. Oh. And so it can it can basically push out your your uh, your written word. Um, the next one I'll, I'm gonna jump to, because I don't think a lot of people are, are leveraging it really well, is LinkedIn. So this one, especially for business, especially for jobs, I see a lot of recruiters, they're posting there. Number one, if you're a recruiter and you're posting jobs, like don't post for a title, post for what you want. So um, I'll use an example of, I think back in the day when they, um, back in like the 1400s, when they wanted sailors, they said, do you want to work hard, low pay, and see the world? Mm-hmm. They, that means they only got the people that were really interested in that kind of attitude. So, you know, if, let's say, um, so here locally we have, I think, 20% of the workforce is in manufacturing. I'd say, do you want to, do you like lifting heavy things? You know, do you like working hard and getting, you know, getting bonuses for working hard and fast? Then come to Line Tech. The problem is, is that most recruiters, when they do it on LinkedIn, they just say, hey, we're looking for customer service rep we're looking for financial advisors we're looking for insurance agents that doesn't the problem with that is that we each have our own impressions of what that title means exactly. and so it can be totally negative when it should be a total positive right um like so i put a post up for here customer service rep no i, I look for somebody who loves working with people who loves you know the financial industry who likes who who's willing to put in some hustle work? Who wants to learn how to leverage social media in a, like an untapped market? That's how I would would would, would post it out. So, so that way you're getting a specific individual that can identify with those um, with those tools. Um, so that's where I think LinkedIn has a lot of um, a lot of strength. And the other one is people aren't using it from a search. Engine. So let me give you an example: is you can go. Go into the search bar on LinkedIn, and you can filter it by city, by by keyword, even people that you work at a specific company. So let's say, for example, I want to get into um, the BA and Esther Foundation. I can look in Wasa. I can look at that specific. I can put in that specific company name, and it's only going to be people that are in that I'm connected with first degree, 
second degree or third degree. That means like, if let's say John knows somebody that knows somebody there, that would be a third degree, right? So I go, John, hey, can you introduce us to, to Camilo? Camilo, can you introduce me to Samantha? And then all of a sudden, Samantha's one that works there. So that's the, that's the leverage of LinkedIn. Um, the, 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 the search function on it's pretty solid. And that's the free version. Uh, you know, you can pay for the, the, you know, you can pay for it, but if you can kind of, you can hack around it from the standpoint that once you do the search and it brings up the results, you click on the third degree and it'll pull everybody. So there you go. That's the way to work around it. Uh, let's see. What does vegan landscape or say? Um, I look at employees who work at local nurseries. Perfect way to use it. Um, as well as those business owners in other service industries. Yeah. So that, that's a really good, I'm going to pin that, um, so a lot of times what, what happens here is that w I think sometimes what happens is we end up looking just linear. So if let's say I want people, um, let me use a, an example, I'm a plumber. So I'm just looking for homeowners. Well, who else would be a good person for me to connect to? Maybe realtors, maybe property managers. And so start th thinking about different individuals that also need their pipes to be cleaned. <laughs> That's a funny phrase. Uh, Chad says on Facebook, LinkedIn is almost a better way to build your uh, sales database than Google when it comes to B2B. This, yeah, their search is really solid. I'm going to pin that up here on Facebook. Um, and I think one of the, the biggest things that people neglect is just being able to connect with those individuals. What's up? My nephew's on. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Okay, so that's LinkedIn. Um, the other thing that I would say for a lot of people is that is your digital business card these days. You know, you do, you do not trust me because I don't have business cards. Um, I, I, here's, the, here's the strategy, the, the, the no business cards, is that I want to control the relationship. So if I meet with John, he's like, hey, do you have a business card? I don't. Do you have one? Then he, then he gives me his card. I reach out to him. So then that way there's this active... I'm going to, because, so I give, I give John my business card. I wait for him to get, get in touch with me. He gives me his card. Boom. The moment that I get back to my office, shoot him a LinkedIn invite, connect with them. So the, the one thing that I will say, our buddy here, Camilo, if you're here locally, get a nice professional photo, right? Don't use something that's black and white. Don't use something of you and your workout clothes, unless you're a personal trainer or, or a fitness coach. Then, of course, it's totally appropriate. Um, but you want a nice professional photo of yourself. And so uh, Camilo here is a photographer. So he does that, does awesome stuff. And so that can be really, really powerful. And then as you look at your LinkedIn, make it like a digital resume. Have it read the different bullet points that are um, you know, actionable based on what you have. Rocky, what's up, buddy? Uh, this guy from high school. Uh, so this is what Vegan says. Uh, real, vegan Landscaper. Um, realtor is a big game for me when trying to get my businesses out there. Business out there, they're willing to sit down and take business cards. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic. Uh, I I think that's where you start thinking. Okay, who else is trying to get the attention of this end user? All right. So there's LinkedIn. Any questions or comments about Twitter or LinkedIn at this point, or even Facebook? We can go backwards and talk about Facebook. Nope. We're good? Okay. So if you have any comments online, just leave them below and we'll get to them. Instagram, get to them. Facebook. The, the next one that I just want to go back um, that you talked about, uh, Camilo, is Instagram. This one's got to be probably the fastest growing one that's still right now hitting it uh, really, really well. And I think the main reason for that is because it's visual. So it's, it's on the backbone of picture and video. Video has to be a minute long. Uh, pictures, you can do um, what they call a carousel. So you can swipe it and you can put it 10 images. So what would be cool, John, is I was thinking of uh, like um, Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. A photo of like the, the, the plot and then you could swipe through as you build that house. That would be a really cool function yeah, of cool. Instagram, right? Um, so, th so that's where I think, you know, from a photographer's perspective, that's kind of the fun thing about the anticipation of the carousel for your is that you can showcase exactly how you do what you do especially because in vintage vintage photography not a lot of globally there might seem like there's a lot of people but you know in town nobody's doing it but then more from a standpoint of showing people how to do it 
Yeah. So that's kind of Were cool those thing. photos be in real time or from your photo uh, gallery? It can come from your uh, photo gallery or you can do it in real time. Uh, good question. Um, Paula, how are you doing? Okay. Um, so the other thing that Instagram has as well is it does utilize the hashtag. So you can put up to 30 hashtags in one post. Mm -hmm. And so then again, it makes your posts searchable. So if let's say I'm in the fitness industry, you know, I could do hashtag fitness, hashtag, you know, family fit, hashtag, um, you know, fitness motivation, hashtag, you know, muscles, hashtag, you know, dude, dude strong. Or, or again, you can find the different hashtags. Um, the other thing that's nice on Instagram is you know how you can like certain people? You can actually follow a specific hashtag. So I follow um, Wasa, hashtag Wasa. So anytime that that comes up, that's a city we live in, by the way, population 39,000 people, specifically just Wasa, um, is that then in any that anyone posts, John, that puts that hashtag in their post, it'll come up in my feed. Whoa. And then I can see what's, what, what are they talking about, mm -hmm. and um, I can then start building my network locally, right? Because that's one of the biggest problems that, you, that you'll find is that you, when you go online, it broadcasts it worldwide. But I want, I want local connections. And so that's why, for me, following a specific hashtag. So if I live in a big city like a New York City, I would do hashtag Manhattan, hashtag Long Island. I'd focus in on a small borough instead of focusing on NYC because that gets way too big. 15 million people, I think, in, in New York City. So that can just get, you know, way too heavy. Um, same thing with L.A. I'd focus on that, you know, K-Town. Um, that's like Koreantown or, you know, La Habra. Just focus in on the smaller cities and that'll help you start building out that um, hashtag. I know for me, Weston, because again, this is just a small village out where I live. Um, people have found me on Instagram because they search that city as well. It's It was... Um, Marathon Endurance, the uh, um, the shoe, the running running store. Oh, okay. um, which if I was them, I would have really awesome tutorials on how to run in winter, how to run in springtime, how to run when it's when it's cold out. I, there's just a lot of how to videos. Just so you know, how to explanations they're huge. Just because people like to know, and by you explaining to people, it makes you look like you know what you're talking about, even if. You you're, you, even if you're just kind of learning it on the fly, you know? Because eventually you say it long enough, you'll, you'll be an expert. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Lady Light says that is a very important feature. Uh, Vegan Landscaper says, I wish we could target hashtags by location. Yeah, that would be really cool. So what he's thinking is like hashtag realtor and hashtag city. So then that way you're just getting micro real, real deep. Um, so... Um, so that, that's Instagram. Any comments or questions about Instagram? Um, I, I'd say from a, from a content perspective, um, didn't realize you can follow hashtags. Yeah, it's really cool. So if you put in the hashtag there, it's going to come up in your search window and it has a follow button to it. And also, when you do a, let's say you do a search WASA, it'll give you anything that's related to it. So it'll say like WASA, WI is one. Um, I think it even brought up Stevens Point when I was looking at it the other day. So it's it's pretty intuitive that it knows ge geographically where you are, which, by the way, going back to LinkedIn, it's geography, it's really intuitive. So if, let's say, we're searching for a job for nonprofits, it'll know that Wausau also includes Cronenwetter and Mosinee and all these small cities that are below us south. There's like 4,000 people in Mosinee. You know, it's, it's a small, pretty small town. Um, but it knows how to like make it, basically make it like the greater Wausau area, population 100,000. So it, it's, pretty, it's pretty useful that way. Um, you can also then like kind of own a hashtag. So I pr there's like 30,000 uses of hashtag Wausau in, um, on Instagram. And like every post that I put out, and I put out like three to seven a day, um, has Wasa in it. So like if you search up into the feed, you'll see me like all over the place in hashtag Wasa. So that's kind of one thing you can find out is almost like um, you can, you know, like vintage photography, you could like see who's using it or not. And you could almost own that hashtag and kind of be like your trademark. So there is a couple phrases that I use, um, Shermisms, and that's and that's basically what I do. How do you go about establishing that ownership? 
Uh, no, you just use it all the time. So no one, no one can own it. It's not like it's not like um, like um, internet uh, internet real estate. Um, but you can do that for websites, which I know people have done, where they like um, they own like DallasCowboys.com, dot com, mm-hmm. and then they sold it to them for like you know a million dollars. Not that specific example, but I knew somebody that um, there's a dry cleaner here in town, and I was meeting with the the, the owners, and they told me that somebody in Colorado bought because their their website um, name like went up like they're it expired and so somebody in Colorado bought it and is like yeah I'll sell it to you for five thousand <laughs> it only cost them fifty dollars to buy it you know what I mean that's because they didn't uh, renew it and uh, so that is what we call internet website real estate you just you're buying dot coms all right, didn't relate to call. Thanks. Sounds like, a, You're welcome. sounds like a new new business to me. It is. It is. Um, it's just, but it's just like anything else, right? You're spending a hundred bucks. Is it going to really pan out? Um, I Kendall, what's up, buddy? Love you too. All right, um, I Kendall. By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna just let let, let get this guy in here. Um, so he's a he's the media guy. I'll give you guys his name. Um, if you want to follow him, he's got a vlog. He's got a podcast. Um, he ran a restaurant. Um, did really well there, and they decided, you know what, really likes marketing, media, helping businesses grow. So that's what he does now. So it's pretty cool. He basically documents his his entire process, how he helps businesses, what he's doing. So it's a really, really cool um, – he puts up a lot of really, really fun things. Um, I do the same. This is what Lady Light says. By the way, Lady Light's a local Wausau person, human being. Um, it's not like it's uh, intellectual property, but it's directly synonymous with your – uh, profile posts until you directly invest like you said. Hold on a second. Um, so this is what she says because I need to read this. I need to understand it. Um, I do the same. It's not like it's intellectual property. Yeah, it's not. So when you do the, use a hashtag, it's not like it's it's your own. You can't own it. Uh, but it's directly synonymous with your profile posts until you directly invest like you said. Yep. So if let's say, John, you were to be like a uh, nonprofit expert and nobody else is using it, but you keep using it every single time you post. You know, and you post, let's say you post three times a day, and you do that for 50 days in a row, 150 hashtags are going to have, or 150 posts are going to have that hashtag, and it's going to be all you. So that's kind of the value. All right, so let's let's jump over to um, YouTube, because I think this one, not necessarily, it's not necessarily like a platform like Facebook or Instagram, but I think it's a tool that a lot of people can use. Uh, mainly because the number one most searched website in the world is Google. Number two, YouTube. Because you can get exactly what you want. Right? So um, <clears throat> I did this as an example last year. It was um, if you wanted to find out what it was like to shop Black Friday, it's the day after Thanksgiving, at a Walmart, you could find it. And so I, I, I literally searched that in Black Friday shopping at Walmart. And up came a video from two years ago, 2015. And it was someone, an employee, that like videotaped the mayhem of like people waiting, you know, to come inside Walmart and then just all the people inside the store. And then and then, and then another post just showed him working, grabbing a bunch of carts all over the place, like people just leaving carts all over. So um, it's, it's amazing what you can find. Paul Bear, how you doing? Um, <laughs> man, hold on one second, buddy. Uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, I'm just a local Native American artist, cultural advisor. That's really good. So... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pin this real quick. So one of the unique things about YouTube is that because you can't have this search, is that you can find a video of exactly what you want to watch. Um, so and, and it's a multitude, right? You're going to find something that's entertaining, that's funny. You want to find music. There's just so much that's out there. And so the interesting thing, so the reason why I pinned Lady Light, so she says that she's into Native American artistry and culture um, and she, you know, kind of a cultural advisor, is that there is, if you wanted to find out exactly that information, I'm either going to Google it, like go on YouTube to find something, to find out maybe a video on the history. Because again, if a picture paints a thousand words, what does video do? Millions. And so what can happen is you can find out exactly what you want. So if I'm looking for Native American artistry, I could go on to YouTube, search that up. And because it's it's on the backbone of Google's search algorithm, it brings up the, only the most relevant. Uh, so just like um, 
any post, you can have like keywords in there. So you don't have hashtags on a, on a YouTube post or video that you upload. It's a bunch of keywords. And then a description of, yeah. um, of what the video is about. Use, do you use the keywords on Google or the YouTube? Search? So, yeah. So when you, when you search in the search bar in YouTube, on that's YouTube. how it finds that's how it finds those uh, those uh, those various videos, uh, but it'll be the same thing, John. When you Google and, and when you when you Google something, and you look for a video, it's going to pull it more likely than not from YouTube's library, just because that's where the most amount of videos are probably being collected right now. Um, interesting thing, um, Mark Zuckerberg had said in 2016 that he anticipates that in 20, by 2021, in five years, majority of posts on Facebook will be video hmm. um, and, and it's mainly because it just it says so much more um, the other thing that I think for YouTube then is somebody that's you know having a personal brand it's, it's a great way to be able to control your reputation so you know if I'm a, if I'm Chad Joe he's a he's a voiceover guy the guy in Minnesota he could put a bunch of different videos of him doing voice voiceover work and it could be deals he got contracts he didn't get I'd put it all up there because if someone wants to see and they want to hear my work, they can get it right there. So instead of you having it on a resume, you can show people exactly what you do. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it's it's a really interesting tool. I have so my uh, I'll just give you an example. My brother in law, he was living in, in Lexington, had his law practice. They decided to move down to Houston. Mm -hmm. Those of you that don't know, that's like thousands of miles away. So they moved down to Houston. And he's looking for law jobs. But on the bottom of his resume, he, what he put was a, a URL. It was a link to a unlisted YouTube. So YouTube videos, you can make them private so no one else can see them just for you. You can make them unlisted. In, in other words, if I give you the link, you can then see it. Or I can make it totally public. And that way people can search it from the, from the keywords or the description. And they can find it. So what he made was just one that was unlisted. So you'd have to put in this URL this web address, in order to see it. Uh, but what it was, it was um, when he had done some different, um, some, uh, some arguments in court, they actually recorded him. They had seven different cameras of him opening, of him um, having some rebuttals, and then having some closes. So it doesn't show any of the, the plaintiffs or defendants. keeps that private. But it's all videos of him arguing in court, live. Um, and so the nice thing about it, so he put that there. So in San Antonio, if you're not familiar with uh, kind of geography, that's like three hours away. So uh, a city that's basically 350 miles. Was it 350 miles? Wait, did you go 70 miles an hour? You took those at by three. Oh, yeah, well, 200, yeah. So, yeah, 200 and some odd? 200 from San Antonio to Houston? Yeah. Yeah, about 250. 250, okay. About 250 miles, driving a car. Um, this law firm saw it. They punched in that and they called up for an interview. Because they said a lot of their cases end up going to court. They don't get settled. And so they needed to make sure that the attorney that they hire has the ability to argue. And they could see it. Right? You could put it all you want in all the bullet points on your black and white resume. But that video was gold. And so, you know, I think it's like a month later, he got, job, he got hired. And so even though he had no network in a city, you know, three hours, three and a half hours away... They could see exactly what he could do. So yeah, I just got through looking at several resumes that were considering to replace Liz with the Wausau River District. Yeah, you know, like looking at stuff on paper, it's five, six pages of resume. Yep, it doesn't really tell who the person is, mm -hmm. but a video would have been because a per person in that position needs to have an outgoing personality. Yeah, you can't really feel that looking at six pages of written material. Yeah, that's a really good point. So John was just mentioning how he sits on a board and he's helping um, them replace an executive director at a uh, local nonprofit right. in our in our town. And so you, you want someone that's really outgoing, but how can you actually tell on a black and white resume if someone's outgoing? So imagine if that person had a video of them engaging with other you know other board members, other individuals. You know, whether they took it from themselves with, on a selfie stick or they had somebody that followed them for, you know, one event, you could see right there whether that person had the ability to engage with others. Personality, the presence, yep. the look, yeah. you know, it all kind of ties together. Yeah.
It's amazing. Um, so, and I, and I think that'll be more the case, uh, leveraging um, you know video for whatever it is that you want to do. So I see Gator Johnny's on here. Gator Johnny drives. Uh, he's actually literally like Russell Gators down in Florida. Guy's crazy, uh, but now he drives a huge, uh, huge monster truck and does tours um, down there in Florida. And that's exactly what I would do. I would be taking video of you know driving the truck fixing the truck talking to people i'd I'd have a channel just called gator johnny i'd have a youtube channel and i'd just be showing what i do because for for everybody up here florida is like paradise especially well not in a day like today today it's like 40 some degrees it's sunny out it's like it's it is paradise right now in wisconsin um so wait what is uh uh paloma turf say uh, would you please explain what pinned is? Thanks. I'm not fancy in computer and literacy. No, no problem. Uh, Gator Johnny, what's up, buddy? So pinning, just so you're familiar on both of these platforms, is that if you if someone makes a comment, I can put, I can click on it, and it'll pin it. So that way, when anyone comes on in, throughout the feed, they'll see that on their fa- on their page. So if let's say, like right now, you decide to join from your phone, even though that person made a comment, let's say ten minutes ago. It's been pinned there, so you'll see it. You'll be able to read it. Even if that person leaves, it's been pinned there. So it's kind of, it's a nice way to be able to, if I'm in a live session talking about a a specific topic, I can put that there and it'll automatically stay there, which is kind of cool. Can you remove the pin? Um, You can. Yep. And then you can put in somebody else's. Um, So, great question. I'm glad glad you asked the questions because I don't expect everybody to know this. Um, I I would do live sessions um, twice a day for like two hours. Um, I did it for like four or five months. It was it was awesome. So, I I like life. I I just love the the spontaneity of it. Okay. So, any other questions about YouTube or comments? A lot of people liked a lot liked YouTube. Um, what's fascinating, John? I know you and I probably aren't aren't like this, but the younger generation we're talking probably twenty five and younger watch more YouTube than Hulu. NBC, CBS, ESPN, HBO, because they can watch exactly what they want. And YouTube eats up a lot of data time on your phone, doesn't it? By it does, yeah. So a lot of times, for most kids, they're um, they're whenever they're on the you know the the internet, you know, it's not when they're not using mom and dad's data. Um, however, I, you, you remember remember back in the day we used to get charged for text messages. Yes. Now now we don't. I think that data will be the exact same way. Eventually, they're going to figure out how basically everybody can be unlimited. I guess T-Mobile will probably be telling me that 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 that, that, that I should promote them. Okay, um, are we talking personal brand debt? Yeah, yeah, we are, buddy. We're talking about use, leveraging platforms. Um, four hours of live. Uh, what is your main job, Papa Bear? That is a conversation for private because of my heavy compliance business. I'm not allowed to talk about that. That is a rule of me being on social is that I will not talk about what I do professionally. But you can just go on LinkedIn, Papa Bear, and you can find me there and you can figure it out. Um, YouTube TV is awesome. Yes. So it's basically you can find and create your own videos. Like your own it, – it's, it's going to suggest based on what you consume mm-hmm. what you should be watching. So if, so if you're really into like Korean, Korean dramas, it's going to start – suggesting to you other Korean dramas on YouTube, which is absolutely amazing to me um, that, you know, if let's say you and I were going to take a trip to India, we could go onto YouTube, we could start watching a ton of videos all about India, where we're going to be going, let's say Bangladesh, and we can learn all about, um, wait, is Bangladesh in India? Let's assume that it is, but I'm going to check that later. Oh, that's not Indonesia. Um, so you're so we'd be able to find out all about it. We'd be able to see the videos about that city before we even go, which is just so powerful. Where I remember back in the day when I went to the Philippines, the closest I could get about finding out the Philippines, there was no internet that was accessible to me. This is ninety six. No, this is nineteen ninety eight. Um, I had to go to a library. Pull up an encyclopedia, pull out the P, and look at the Philippines. <laughs> and, and basically, I had a page and a half. Whatever Britannica was going to dedicate to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's amazing like how we got around things. Um, I remember when I first bought a GPS unit for my car because I was doing all these sales calls. And that was $1,000 for that GPS unit. But it was, it was totally worth it. It's 
It's crazy. Now you got GPS. I just asked my grandson last week, so do they still have encyclopedias at school? Yeah. They, they think so. <laughs> they didn't know. Yeah, I think they do, but they're kind of archaic. The problem is that they're just not, they can't keep up, keep up to date. So, but I know Britannica, the encyclopedia company, actually has a very strong website. They basically started putting all their data, all their info online. So it's a, it's a really good uh, source. Uh, so this is what God, uh, Gator Johnny says. Uh, YouTube, Instagram, Anchor, etc. Make the middleman irrelevant. Anyone can now make a TV show, music video, audio, or professional level photography and distribute it. Um, like never before. You know, you, you could get a couple buddies together with the power of these cell phones, create your own skits, create your own TV show. Um, there are no more excuses to take action. Absolutely. Great comment. Okay, so that's that, that's YouTube. The next one um, I'll address is Snapchat. Definitely, uh, this is a really unique tool. It's, it's more of a communication tool. It's the, I mean, you can build an audience, um, which, which is unique, um, but it's really meant for communicating via video or text back and forth. Um, you can make phone calls through Snapchat as well, international, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that it has is, the ge- I think the geo filter is probably what's probably one of the more unique things about the tech. Um, so what that means is you can... You can put like based on your your location, you can put a fence around it. So you can say, okay, hey, I'm here at this this business, and I want to go within a two mile radius, and I'm going to have an event here. Let's say um, Granite Peak at the there's a ski resort up here on the hill, and I'm going to have a big concert. So you can create um, a filter. It's called. So when I take a photo of myself, or I take a photo of I'm there, and I I swipe. I can find this filter and it can say like Granite Peak 2018. So when people start posting it, they're like, oh man, I wasn't there. So it has this way of being able to just identify you being at a specific spot at a specific time. Um, and overall cost for that is really inexpensive. So the geo, fil- geo filter, I think it's like certain, certain like it said, I think it's like a one mile rate. It's like five bucks for an hour. 10 bucks for an hour for two. Really, really inexpensive. People use them for their weddings. So as a way to just kind of have these really unique photos of anyone that was there. That's how people are using them. Plus it's really inexpensive. You're just, hey, you know, they, they might have been able to make the, the filter themselves um, or and then submit it to, to Snapchat. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Lady Light says... It's unfortunate Snapchat's stock fell so drastically. Yeah, um, th- that's this is a totally different game, right? When you when you're talking about like investments versus the usefulness of a platform, um, they don't necessarily correlate, right? Because because business owners they want or pe- stockholders they want profit, not cool features, which is a little bit tough. Um, I miss encyclopedias <laughs> when I was a youngster. These those books were con- constant for me. Yep, loved. Exp- yeah, there's just. Well, now you got Google. Google's even better. You got lots to explore. All right. Um, so then, that, that, the reason the reason why Snapchat I think is really unique is that that's where a lot of young people are. You go on Snapchat, Camila. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how do you use it? Um, don't really use it to do anything else other than communicate with my friends. Yep. But I know a lot of people, mainly like influencers, I guess. Yep. Uh, people who make their. Um, audience mainly through showing their lives and being popular just because of who they are yep uh, i know they get a lot of audience by being on snapchat okay so you use it mainly just for personal communication yeah, don't pay a lot of attention to the other people but they do get a lot of audience okay yeah so um <clears throat> camilo young guy um he says he basically uses uh, snapchat just for engaging with others but there are people out there that um, you know, they just let people know, hey, I'm on, I'm on Snapchat. And so they, and, and what it is, it's, it's them showing a little bit more of their personal life. And that's, and that's how I ended up using it. So I started looking at my platforms and what am I putting out there versus other platforms. It's just kind of getting a little bit more of a theme. Um, and then, uh, and Instagram is beating Snapchat right now. Um, just the way that the platform works. It's, it's more of a, it's a more social media platform versus Snapchat. Snapchat, I, have to, I literally have to go find someone uh, in order to follow them. Um, but Snapchat as well, it's, it's like the under, 
the under 24 demographic that's really where you you know you're you're, you're going to find it um so any comments or questions about facebook instagram things for the heart attack by the way um snapchat linkedin youtube any Okay, so one of the first things I know for most people, they, they hear this and they're like, holy freak, that's a lot of stuff to be on. So where I'd start, number one, is um, take a step back. I know that there's some tools out there to help you. So one of the, one of the ones I, I wrote on my board here is there's one called Buffer, B-U-F-F-E-R. I'm going to put it here on Facebook, Buffer. And then there's also um, oh, Buffer, Hootsuite. And social jukebox. So what this, what those tools allow you to do is create some automation to it. So if there's a specific post that you're that you want to put out there, um, like so, for example, if let's say um, on Twitter, I want to be able to leverage that as a way to be able to get employees. So every Monday. For hashtag Monday motivation, I could have uh, a post looking for specific employees. So saying, and then and then so on social jukebox, I can put that that post in there, and I can make it like evergreen, where it's always going to be there once a month or once every first Monday um, of the month. It's going to keep putting it out there, and so that that can be really powerful. So that way, it takes that entire post away from you. Now, now it's going to automatically do it on its own. Um, I, I would say for most automation, put it maybe 30 day, um, 90 days to 180 max in advance. Mm -hmm. You get beyond that, it's, it's hard to say that that thing's going to be relevant in the future. Uh, but there are some businesses that they're constantly looking for employees. I think about retail. I think about restaurants. I think about convenience stores that even if it's not necessarily the one right here locally, it might be the one down the street. And so it, it can be a, a real easy way to just let people know that you're you're hiring. Um, Papa Bear says, uh, do you think your social media takes too much time away from you doing your job and pays the bills? Uh, no. No, because it helps pay the bills, actually. Um, so the, the other, so uh, interesting thing about what Papa Bear says there is that um, what you'll find for, for sales folks is that you're in a, in a constant look for new people. But the nice thing about social media is that it's reversed in that it's actually have people now found me. So instead of me knocking on their door, people now are starting to knock on my door, which is a pretty smart. Sir. It's a it's a heck of a lot better way to to prospect. Um, what do they say? Network until basically you don't need to introduce yourself anymore. That's the idea. Um, so then, what I would do, Papa Bear, is build a build a presence online, but then reverse it to go local and go super deep. And I think that's where people they they get the, they get stuck because they're like, oh, if I start building this online network, it's all across the country. Well, don't worry about that. Don't worry about where you're building it. And then because as you meet people face to face, then you can start connecting with them online as well. So you're basically connected with these people face to face, and then you're pulling them onto your online network. And then anybody that's here locally, if you haven't met them face to face yet, you can then find them online and then go from online then to face to face. So you're basically doing like a two pronged approach there. Um, so let's see what else. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, so the, the Buffer and Hootsuite also allow you to post from their sites to all of them. So you can make one post, send it to Twitter, send it to Instagram, send it to Facebook. So the one thing is that the, the social media likes it to be come from its organically there. So that wants you to create the content right there on Facebook and upload it there. Um, and same with Instagram, same thing with like Twitter. Um, so won't get as seen as if it's, so that, so let's say for example, I post from Hootsuite to all those different platforms versus doing it individually to these different platforms. I'm going to get, how do you do that? Through Buffer? Yeah. Or, or Hootsuite. Oh, right. uh, Hootsuite, it's oh. H-O-T suite. Um, so it'll allow you to do, um, to post it all those, all those, um, all those 
social media platforms. But then if you decide to post it individually to each one of those, Mm -hmm. you're going to get more traction by posting it individually. Um, But again, be cognizant of your time because you you know how you can mix this in. You know how um, easy it is Um, or not, depending on your life and your schedule and how you can kind of figure that out. I think that's probably one of the most important things for people is to figure out how that makes sense for them. NYC roofing. Um, So then in the last thing that I'll say in, in all these platforms in order to not feel overwhelmed with them is to figure out who are you targeting and start there first. So I know you hear about all of these, right? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Musical.ly, uh, YouTube, LinkedIn. You hear all these different social media platforms and you don't know, okay, how do I make sense out of all this? Start with one and get really good at it. So where I would start for most people is I would look at Facebook. Because you're in photography, you have to do Instagram. You'd be crazy not to just because it's a, it's a photography website. I mean, that's, it, it's, it was built with filters in mind. Um, and so the idea, though, of being able to just get really good and comfortable on Facebook, the principles of like posting, the principles of using a hashtag, the power of tagging someone. So, you know, you come to this and I, and I put the at sign and I put your name in there and then it, then it, what it does is it sends you a link to say that you were tagged in something. And then anybody that follows you, they might get notified as well that you got tagged into this. And so, and it starts growing the the audience that way. Um, And then by being able to get really good at one, it'll allow you to know, okay, how do I then use some of these other tools? But Facebook is, on average, age-wise, it's in like the mid-40s, is the average user on Facebook. Versus Twitter's younger, Snapchat's younger, Instagram's younger. And so um, a lot of these... LinkedIn, LinkedIn and Facebook are probably your best like professional connecting, um, and YouTube's even um, I think is pulls from everybody, so it's it's a pretty unique platform. Um, it's got a really good strong demographic pull. Um, so that's that's where think about your audience. Who do you think would end up using your skills, your um, you know your expertise or your post? They find value in it. At the same time, if let's say they're fifty five now, is the ideal person. Don't neglect the 45-year-old today because if you're going to be in business in 10 years, you may as well make sure that you're getting in front of everybody. Um, and so that's where I think you end up can leveraging these platforms is focus on one and then and then move over. At the same time, I would say don't get like stuck on one, right? Like, um, like you do, like the best example is MySpace. People that built good audiences on MySpace but only existed on MySpace – all of a sudden, Facebook came in, and, and all of a sudden, it just seemed like all the attention shifted to Facebook, and so now you're starting at square one again. And so, I, and I've known people, they had a really good following on Instagram, and their account got hacked. So they had to cancel, they had to delete that account and start afresh. So you don't want to build it all on just one platform and find yourself at the mercy of whatever that platform decides to do. So you can't get like romantic or married into just one platform. These are just communication tools. Would it be fair to say that navigation amongst all the different platforms is fairly similar, or not? Not so. Um, D- different purposes. Uh, different right. purposes, but you're right. I mean, from uh, the the strategy of being able to engage with people and connect with them, it's it's pretty similar. Yeah. You know, um, Twitter calls it following somebody, Facebook calls it friending somebody, um, Snapchat is, uh, yeah, I think friends as well. Instagram, you're following, following as well. You're following somebody. So they use different terminology, but it means exactly the same. Um, and on, on LinkedIn, you're connected to somebody. You're linked with someone. Uh, but then you can also follow people. So if you like what they're talking about, you could follow their activity. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that you're connected to them. So, um, which is kind of a nice way to be able to follow people, even though you haven't worked with them before. All right. Any other questions, guys? Okay, that's it. Thanks for coming on online Facebook. Thanks, everybody, here on Instagram.